Well, praise the Lord. Give God a great big hand clap. Thank you, Lord. Enter in with me in prayer. Father God, such an honor to be in your house. Yes. On this holy ground, in this holy place, to receive through the Holy Spirit your holy word. Father God, sanctify us right now. Grace us to sit out and sit aside and separate from all distractions of this earth. All cares of the world, on purpose, we set them aside. That full heartedly, with all of our affections, we enter into your presence and fellowship with your word by the Spirit of God. Father, let this word go forth simple, sacred, humble, and holy in spirit. Let everyone in this place receive deeply. Let everyone in this place never be the same again. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. The people of God said, Amen. 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 Well, if you have your Bibles this morning, open up with me the first Corinthians chapter 9. First Corinthians chapter 9. And as you're opening there, I would also like you to say amen when you find your place. Amen. amen. And then look up here, we're going to agree in prayer together as a congregation for Sister Sandra that <coughs> Pastor T.C. met. I, I know she's going to watch this and I know she'll be very touched. And that's what I want. I want her life to be influenced. And I want grace to come on her. Mm -hmm. Sister Sandra has suffered the loss of her husband within a week. She's only been less than a week ago. And we're going to join ourselves in prayer right now. Stretch out your hands. Father, we lift this dear precious woman of God. Who's called by your name. Who's anointed by your spirit. For the work of the ministry, who has lost her husband, one of your servants, Father, a great, glorious man of faith, who's now looking down over the portholes of glory as part of now that great cloud of witnesses. We stand in front of him, you, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus. And we say, Father, by the power of the blood of Jesus, by the power of the Spirit of the living God, touch Sandra with your anointing, with your glory, from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. Let the spirit of joy come upon her. Replace sorrow with praise and joy. For the joy of the Lord is the strength of your people. Let her rise up in power, majesty, and demonstration of the goodness of our God. And let her preach, proclaim, and destroy the kingdoms of darkness around her like never before. To the glory of Jesus Christ and by the power of the blood and the authority of the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Give the Lord another Amen. We love you, sister. We've been doing an in-depth study on the revelation of repentance, the need of repentance. The process that God's calling the church to right now is to repent with the purpose of mortification for the result of transformation for the end goal of manifestation. You don't just repent to say, God, I'm sorry. But as God by grace, repentance is an act of grace. Amen. God Amen. looks at you in your sin, and no one comes to the Father except the Spirit leads him. Amen. Unless the Lord, the Spirit of God leads somebody, nobody comes to God. So when somebody strays and they get into sin, they wait, they, they wander away from 
the purposes that they were created for, the fellowship of God. God looks down in the middle of their sin, and out of His goodness, by grace, when they don't deserve it, looses a touch onto their hearts through the Holy Spirit, and they feel God's conviction, God's love saying, please stop and come back to me. Most people don't look as re in repentance as God's grace, but it's definitely the love of God that draws you back home when you're lost and blinded and don't know you need to come back. Amen. 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 So when we're going through this work of righteousness daily before the Lord, righteousness is right standing with God and right way of doing things. Amen. So you can be saved and live completely wrong. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 But as we learn the Word of God and learn the ways of the Lord and let the Holy Spirit touch our hearts instead of hardening our hearts. Come on. Listen Amen. to me. Most people do what when they sin? Run. Then they do something else. Lie. Then they do something else. Hide. Amen? Amen. How many of you have caught a kid doing something wrong and they'll deny, deny, deny after you've found out what they hid? <laughs> Amen? And they'll stand there and look you in the eye. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Until they figure out that their denial isn't going to outlast their conviction. Then they break and say, I'm, dad I'm sorry, Daddy. And then correction has to come and then res restoration comes. Amen? Amen? In the church that we live in, we reduce repentance into, I'm sorry, go about my happy little Pentecostal way, and never change. Repentance is so that you understand I'm in error, then I make corrections, and then whatever is in my life that caused me to err, I put to death. I take it to the cross, I nail it to the cross, and I consider it dead. I don't live with it. Come on. Now that might be an everyday process, five or six times a day, 70 times a day, for even several years. But you're going to have to fight the good fight of faith. Submit to God, resist the devil, and he flees from you. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's not a one-time deal. Amen? So God's grace is poured out. You feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit. You identify that you're wrong. You come back to God in that repentance. Repentance is, here's another thing right now. Repentance is always a move of God to bring back fellowship, not just show you how bad you are. Amen. Amen. It's always with the result to get you back to the walk with the Lord. If you're born again, then you walk in the Spirit. Amen. God always wants you walking with Him. The whole point that you're, that you're born again is to have fellowship daily, all day long, all night long, intimate, close fellowship with God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. One of my daily prayers is, Holy Spirit, I want to be able to hear your voice more clearly, more consistently, and more frequently than any human voice around me. Amen. That's the call of the Spirit. So when you're truly born again, when you're truly born again, the Spirit is going to fellowship with you, and you're going to have a God-born desire to, of the things of God. Amen. Getting born again, leaving the church, playing in the honky tonks, running your own way. How, I got saved when I was eight. Me and God are good. No, you're not. Amen. Because if you're a plant, you're going to grow. If you're planted of the Lord, you're going to grow with the Lord. Not Amen. go out and grow in the world. Amen. 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 You shall know their fruits. Amen? Amen? So I can tell a Christian by the way he fellowships with God. Lives Christian. Grows in the things of God. Amen? Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody say Hallelujah. glory to God. Glory to God. Yeah. I'm going to have to stay real disciplined. Recapping very, very quickly. Last week we looked at 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 24 through 27. Know ye not that they which run a race... Say run. run. Listen, write this down if you didn't take notes. Number one point, you're supposed to live this life with a purpose, not aimlessly, 
Not sitting around year after year in church saying, I wonder what God's got for me. Amen. I'll tell you what He's got for you, a cross. Pick it up and follow Him. Amen. Be on Amen. fire for Him. Live for Him. It's not brain surgery. The call of a child of God is to live a life that gives glory to Jesus Christ. Amen. It's not confusing. Amen. What do you want from me, God? I want you to live a life of sacrifice a commitment equal to the sacrifice and commitment I gave to you. I died that you might live. Now you live for me. Amen. The goal of a child of God is to grow up enough in Christ Jesus that you look like Christ Jesus. Why? Because you are written epistles, read, read, read of all men. When you walk the streets, you're expected to look like a Christian, walk like a Christian, talk like a Christian, and then they go, look, a Christian. Amen. Amen. If it quacks like a duck, has feathers like a duck, web feet like a duck, I'll repent for this later. I'll bet good money it's a duck. <laughs> Come on. We, we turn all this into brain surgery because our souls are out of control. Our souls are rebellious to this word of God that we say we love. And because our souls are out of control, Paul called it willful ignorance. We create doctrines induced by devils of seduction and lust to come up with phraseologies and ideas that make the ways of God complicated and everybody starts going, well, you never know what God wants and go off and live any way they want. Right. This is the way, walk ye in it. Pick up your Bible, read it, obey it, and live it. It's that simple. Amen. 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 And God's going to repent, cause you to repent when you stray from the Word. Come on. Look at somebody say, it doesn't matter what mama thinks. It doesn't matter what God thinks. It doesn't matter what my friends think. It doesn't matter what my friends think. It matters what God thinks. And when you stray from the Word of God, He's going to move by the Holy Spirit to cause you to feel conviction unto repentance to come back and put that strain to mortification. Put it under. Kill it. Nail it to the cross. So repentance is for mortification. Putting to death the things that fight the Spirit of God is so that you can have a transformation. That you don't do what you used to do. You're renewed in your soul and your body. You're, you follow the Spirit and now that transformation causes you become more whole in a broken, sinful, destroyed world, you've got to be able to live whole. To live whole, you've got to be able to mature. Amen. What's the natural desire of a parent? That their children grow up to be good people. What's the natural desire of God? Number one, we're going to wipe out all the brain surgery, grow up and be like your, his oldest son, Jesus. A good child. So God's desire for you is that we grow, and we grow into what God calls a good son and daughter. Amen. Not what the world is. We're going to get to that in just a minute. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You talk to the world, 99% of all the people you talk to, if you died right now, are you going to heaven? We covered this last week about, well, you know, don't, don't preach so hard. Every, you'll offend the people that are seekers. Well, first of all, they're not seeking. They're playing in the world. Amen. They want to be right with God and still be exactly like the world. Seekers are those people that will sacrifice anything to find God. They sell their house, their cars, and go to Tibet searching for God. That's a seeker. We've got a bunch of worldly people playing around dabbling that want to feel like they won't go to hell but live like their way. Amen. Come on. So don't preach hard you might offend them. Well, folks, listen. They already know they're sinners. Listen, I talk to people all the day, all, all, every day, all day long. You're looking at one of the few pastors that actually is a soul winner. I witness to people, lead people to the Lord when I'm not in the pulpit. Can you believe that? Amen. Why? Because that's part of why you were born again. Amen. To reproduce. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You can't be a good minister until you first are a good child. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. How many of you know you can't be a good parent 
if you're a big kid. Right. Come on. Amen. Come on. How many parents have we got completely, completely, totally undependable and immature having babies? Yes. And what's happening to us? Nobody's growing up. Because nobody will become a mother or a father. They just want to play. Well, Amen. So you ask the average person now, Tony, if you were, when he was a, a Babylonian, still dressing like a Hittite, if you died right now, would you go to heaven? Oh, yeah. Ask them all. Ask any of them. If you died right now, would you go to heaven? Yeah, I, I'd go to heaven. Why? Because I'm a good person. And they're, having, they're in adultery. They're fornicating. They're doing drugs. <laughs> they lie every day. They talk behind people's back. They break every commandment known to God routinely. But they're going to heaven because they're good people. They don't know they're sinners. They don't know they're lost and undone. They convince themselves they're right with God when they're not. So what's the goal? To become the image of Jesus Christ. What are we supposed to be? Repenting of everything that's not God daily even though we're secure in Christ Jesus, we're born again, seated on the throne, we're supposed to repent every day for the things this mind and this flesh causes us to stray from God. Amen. Put it down, cause it to mortify, put to death, change that stuff, then as we're transformed, we manifest Jesus to a lost and dying world. Instead of just claiming we're saved, but looking exactly like the world. Yes, amen. amen. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. So, number one, you're supposed to live this life on purpose. Not just wandering around, going to church, and living any way you want. Church is to equip you, teach you, instruct you how to live and act like Jesus. Amen. amen. Church is supposed to cause you to grow up. Amen? Amen. Amen. So ultimately, you may come here not knowing hardly anything. But after a while, you're going to know what the Bible says, and you're going to go out those doors and lay hands on the sick. Yes. Amen. Cast yes. out devils. Amen. Raise the dead. Yes. Lead people to salvation. Amen. That's the purpose you were created for. That's what Jesus did. That's what you're supposed to be living for. To what extent? He gave all to you. Now you're supposed to give all to Him. You're supposed to, every day you can ask this woman right here. I wake up, first thing I, my feet hit the floor, my hands go up in the air. I say, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Father. Praise God. And then I ask Him, Father, give me a divine appointment. Cause this day, somehow this day, lead me to the person and let me preach Jesus. Let me share Jesus. Let Him be saved. Give me another soul. Every day I wake up wanting one more soul. Amen. That's what I live for, because that's what Daddy lived for. That's what Jesus came for. We're going to look at that in just a second. Amen? Amen. So you transform from the selfish lifestyle to a life given over to the ways of God so that others might live. Amen. Amen. You, 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 you repent of being selfish, self-centered, all about me, and mortify those selfish desires, forcing yourself to grow up, that you become like Jesus, that others can depend on you. Come on. You repent of all the goals that you live for, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, that you can take the kingdom of God to others, that the sick can be healed, that the lost can be saved, that the castaway can be brought back to God. Amen. Amen. The works that I do, you shall do also, and greater works, because I go to be with the Father. Look at somebody and say, live on purpose. Live on purpose. Now, parentheses in your notes, put kingdom purpose. God's purpose, not mine. Amen. 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 Now, you start making decisions like that to really live for God, you're going to find out you're going to start losing friends real fast. I mean, real fast. Even church friends. Glory to God. All right, so you got to live this life. Know you not that they that run the race all run, but only one receives the prize. So you got to live life with so much Holy Ghost fire as I have got to get 
the prize. I'm living today to pass the finish line and get approval from the Lord. Well, you don't have to, God loves you just the way you are. You're not listening. It's not, a, it's not anything to earn salvation. It's not anything to earn His love. It's living for the purpose you were created for. Come on. Amen. You're living for the commission that Jesus gave you. Go ye, preach my name, do my works, that others might be saved. That is your born again purpose. It has nothing to do with whether you're loved or not. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, so live on purpose, live on fire. You can't live with that kind of purpose in your life, lukewarm. It's impossible. If I don't like that fanatical stuff, then you'll never be any good for the kingdom of God. Come on. Jesus said, the zeal of the Lord consumes me. Hallelujah. So if you're going to be like Jesus, you better get some zeal. Well, how do you get zeal? Well, you start getting hungry for zeal. And when you get hunger, hungry and thirst for righteousness, you will be filled. Amen. This casual, complacent, hit of the lip Christianity, I don't get nothing from God because you don't invest anything. Amen. You're not hungry. You're not thirsty. You're just playing. Amen. And God's not moved by indifference ever. Amen. Amen. Neither are women. I don't know why we buy this in the church. You love me, honey? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love you. Most divorces, because all women ever see after they get married is an ear. Amen. I'm talking to you. Hallelujah. The only time she gets pretty costly. Settle down in the front row. Amen. The only time women see your face is when you want something off their body or you need money. Amen. All the rest of the time, all they do is see an ear. You love me? Uh-huh. Are we still close, honey? Uh-huh. Would your ears stop talking and look at me? <laughs> now, how would it, How do you think God buys that? Not at all. We already covered what God calls it, lukewarm. If you want to save this relationship, you start putting some investment in it. This lukewarm Christianity is what's killing the church and causing America to fall. Amen. Come on, brother. Okay. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Live with purpose, live on fire. And never cool off. You find yourself cooling off? Buy some glove warmers. We do it in the world. It's cold out here. What do you do? Oh, I shiver. No, you don't. You put stuff on. You buy foot warmers. You buy glove warmers. You do everything you can to keep warm. In the church, man, God understands. Unbelievable false doctrine we teach ourselves. Look at somebody say, buy some fire. Buy some fire. Get it right. Get it right. Stop playing church. Stop, Stop playing, playing church. church. Because you know whether you like it or not, whether I like it or not, whether, whether your mom likes it or not, you're going to stand in front of God. And I'll tell you right now, you're not going to look over at Pastor TC and say, he never told me. Amen. Amen. Come on, brother. You're going to hear it. You're going to hear it clear. You're going to hear it so clear, an idiot can get what I'm trying to say. And that's exactly why God said get more fiery, because the world's falling into this ridiculous, stupid, stupefied indifference and coldness. Amen. Amen. Don't look at me in that tone of voice. What happens to a perfectly good person when they get drunk? It's stupid. When they get intoxicated with the world, that's exactly how Christians act in God's eyes. You can get a doctor with a PhD, get him drunk, <laughs> walk stupid, stand stupid, talk stupid, respond stupid. He's stupefied because he's intoxicated. The world has intoxicated the church and caused it to become stupid in ridiculous error. Amen. Amen. It's time to sober up, stir up, and get the fire burning again. Amen. Amen. You know what? You know what causes. <laughs> You know what burns really good around alcohol? Fire. <laughs> Amen. Now, there's no cure for alcoholics. That's called the Holy Ghost. Amen. Yeah. Amen. What's killing the church is calming down and is having church with the wisdom of the world. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't need 12 steps. I need one step. Amen. And after that step... It's called repentance. Hug the cross and stay there till you know God's touched you. Amen. 
Amen? Amen. Amen. Now listen to verse 25. Every man, every man. Look at somebody say, that includes you. That includes you. That includes you. Every man that strives, we're talking about a lifestyle really living for God, that strives for the mastery. So what are you supposed to be striving for? Just being saved? The mas mastering this spiritual stuff. Dominating the kingdom of darkness. Living as a master over the circumstances of life. Mastering this Holy Spirit lifestyle. If you're going to strive for the mastery, then you become the person that's self-disciplined. Not hallelujah, what's it to you? Come on. All these phraseologies go right out the window when you open this Bible and understand how you're supposed to live. Strive, run this race on purpose with an attitude that I am going to win. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. That's all I want to hear. Amen. Keep the boats, keep the planes, keep the furniture, keep the clothes. All I live for is to cross the finish line after I've tripped, screwed up, got back up a dozen times, but get across the line with all that is in me so that Father might say, well done. Amen. 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 I don't want to cross the finish line here. Well, Amen. so the goal is to be in spiritual mastery, not a, not a novice, not just well. I think the Bible says to be a master in the spirit realm. Anybody's going to enter into mastery? Listen lives a temperate life. Is it he's temperate, disciplined, governs himself in all things. How many of us got that one area of sin we allow ourselves to live in? Well I pray now and I tithe now and I fast now and then, but God understands I gotta cuss my wife now and then. We've all got this area where we allow ourselves latitude to play like the world and act like a heathen. No, he says if you're gonna live serious with God you live in mastery, and you temp you're temperate and disciplined and under self-control in all things of your life. Amen. Until you look just like Jesus. Amen. Look at somebody and say, no excuses. No, no excuses. Amen. Now, does that mean I'm perfect? No. Nope. Does that mean you're going to be perfect? No. Nope. But this is the goal, this is the standard, and this is how we live. Amen. Every day needing repentance to stay that way. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's tempered in all things. They run this life. They live their life to receive to receive rewards that rust and corrupt and erode and fall away. But we're living this life to receive a reward that's never corrupted, never rusted, and is eternal. It's called the crown from God. Amen. Amen. Oh, that I might receive a crown from the Lord. Crossing the finish line with a well done, thou good and faithful servant. That the Lord himself would hand me an overcomer's crown. That I was able to master the circumstances of life in Christ Jesus. That I was able to live like Jesus and bring people to the cross. That people were following me across the finish line, hearing the same reward from God. That Jesus, as I kneel at his feet, would hand me an overcomer's crown. That I could have the glory and the honor to lay it back at his feet and say, I live for your glory. It's all about you, Jesus. Amen. 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 That's all I want. To be able to take whatever he gives me and lay it back at his feet and say, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You're going to live this way? In a world of compromise, and a church of backsliding, you're going to have to make a conviction that I want to live righteous. I want to live the right way. Doing things the right way. And I make restrictions on my liberties, even though I can do everything in Christ. Amen. Amen. Verse 27. But I keep my body under subjection. I bring it into subjection. Look at somebody say, God's not going to cause you to get better. God's not going to cause you to get better. He'll help you when you make the decision 
to get better. It'll help you when you make a decision. Grace kicks in when your heart gets right. Amen. Everybody's walking around with God, God. God understands beside that if he didn't like it, he knows where I live. What a bunch of filthy nonsense. Take up your cross, crucify yourself, and follow me daily. Amen. You keep it submitted to Jesus. You keep it honoring the Lord. You put restrictions on yourself. You demand your body lines up with the Spirit. Hallelujah. Glory to God. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 23. All things are lawful to me, but not all things are expedient. All things are lawful, lawful to me, but all things do not edify. That means, I, yeah, praise God. I, I'm free in Christ. Yes, you are. But you're not living for the mastery. The guy mastering spiritual ways, the, 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 the mature manifestations of the sons of God that want to grow up to be like Jesus, they put restrictions on their life. They make their body submit. They make their mind obey the Lord. They make their tongue speak the ways of righteousness. All things are lawful, but all, all things edify. That word edify is building the house. Know ye not that you are the temple of the Lord? You can do all this stuff and, and act like you're saved, but you're not building yourself up to look like Jesus. There's no. all kinds of things you do as a Christian that do not bring the mastery into your life and don't build you your your life up as a temple of God. Come on. Now, if you love Jesus, I love Jesus, then you naturally want to be like him. Because that's part of the Jesus seed. We're going to look at that in just a second. If you're born again, you start walking in the Spirit. The Spirit starts training you in the ways and nurturing the admonition of the Lord. To be like Jesus, because the commission was do what I did. You can't do what he did until you mature in the ways he was. Amen. 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 You can't rebuke what you invite. Amen. You can't shun what you play with. You can't ignore. I'm not going to say that. You can't. You can't turn your shoulder in public. To what you flirt with in the dark. Because the, the people, listen, how many of you know your sins will find you out? You run, you run with the, the wrong people at night, they're going to wave at you and say, hi, Bill, when they see you in the daylight. And then you're embarrassed yeah. and you're exposed. Yeah. You, you, you invite demons in your so-called closed door in your living room, be not deceived. Whatever's whispered in private will be shouted from the rooftops. Everything you're flirting with in private, the demons are going to wave at you and embarrass you in public. Hey, I found I found your iPad. Is this yours? And and you hit it to see if your if your face comes up on it. And porn was the last thing hit on it. Oh my God! Who who had my iPad? <laughs> Is this your phone? You dropped it. You, Pick up the last person to dial was Sister Golden Hair and the dating service. Your sins will find out. Whatever you're flirting with in the dark, they're going to wave at you in the day. Better start putting some restrictions on you. Where'd all the amens go, you Pentecostals? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, what's the goal? To live a life that builds the house of God. Live disciplined, live with purpose. Live on fire, live for the mastery, live to build the temple of the Lord, live to build God's house, live to edify the things of God and the people of God. Amen. 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 Does my life strengthen other people in Christ? Hallelujah. Amen. Come on. Glory to God. 1 Corinthians 15:33. Be not deceived, evil communication. Pastor Tony, you got the Amplified? Yeah, 1 Corinthians 15, 33 and 34. Listen to this very closely. Very closely. You guys, you guys are those high-tech people with your Bible on your phone. That drives me nuts. Yeah. Huh? I, uh, I was 
going to turn around and get back and she thought she was ready. That's okay. That's all right. I know, I know that's, that's the generation, but there's just something. There's You like pass on the, the family iPhone. <laughs> well, that's romantic. First and piece. all kinds of people in this generation do that. I'm the dinosaur. I like, I like, here, son, I'm giving you the family Bible. Here's the family iPhone. It's just not the same. <laughs> yeah, she does it too. Stop it. <laughs> all y'all repent. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Are you ready? 1 Corinthians 15, 34. Listen to it in the King James and listen to it in the Amplified. Do not be deceived. Evil communication corrupts. Now, who's, every scripture I've read to you is the Holy Spirit through the Apostle Paul talking to the church, not sinners. Come on. Don't be deceived. Particularly, don't be self-lied to. Come on. Don't be that category where Paul said they're willfully ignorant of the truth. Amen. Amen. There's some people you can convince that they're wrong. Other people, you haven't got a hope in hell of ever telling them they're wrong because they've convinced themselves, they've lied to themselves so long, they believe the lie that they're okay. Come on, bro. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, you lie to yourself long enough and it'll start sounding true. Yes. Amen. This is the only truth. This is the mirror that reflects back what manner of man you really are. You better judge yourself according to this and stop lying to yourself. Amen. Everything Paul has said from the Holy Spirit has been to the church. Do not be deceived. Evil communication corrupts good manners. Evidently, there's a problem with that in church. Yes. Amen. 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 Instead of, well, you can come to our church. It's safe here. You know what that means? We'll never convict you. We'll take the crosses off, make sure there's nothing sung, nothing done. We're not going to have that Holy Ghost nonsense. It might scare the seekers. Come on, brother. <laughs> All that means is you'll be comfortable in your sin and we'll never convict you. Somebody say hallelujah. 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 Now watch, be not deceived, corrupt uh, evil communications, corrupt good manners. Awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Now listen, listen it just jumps up and slaps me in the face every time I go to the Amplified. That's why it's called the Amplified. Well, I know, I think man, you just you couldn't quite hear that. Amplify goes, pow! Did you hear that? Yeah, I heard that. that, that yeah, the bells are ringing, I got it. And it gets so loud, you got to now become willfully ignorant not to hear it. Now listen to that same verse in the Amplified Bible. Verses uh, 33 and 34, Pastor Tony. Do not be so deceived and misled. Evil companionships, communion, associations. Evil Communion and associations. In other words, goofy friends screw up your life. Amen. Come on, brother. Go ahead. Corrupt and deprave good manners and morals and character. They corrupt your good manners, your good morals, and listen, here's the part, underline this, your character. Because we're going to get into that in just a minute. Go ahead. Awake from your drunken stupor. Wake, remember earlier I said that we're intoxicated and stupefied with the love of the world? We're in, we've become drunk trying to be acceptable to people that mock your God. Return to sober sense. Return to somebody that's acting sober and got good sense. In your right minds and sin no more. For some of you have not the knowledge of God. You are utterly and willfully and disgracefully ignorant. You're utterly and willfully. I want to be stupid. I don't want to know the truth because I want to play in the world. Amen. And continue to be so, lacking the sense of God's presence and all true knowledge of him. I say this to your shame. Now who was that man talking to? The church. I heard all my life since I got saved, not all my life, the last 35 years or so, that 
You better go preach the gospel because some don't have the knowledge of God. Say that to your shame. And that's true. That's absolutely true. The world's going to hell and all we care about is having a lot of days in the lobby. But what he is actually saying, you're so ignorant in church, you should be ashamed. You're so totally, woefully ignorant of the ways, of the spirit, of the heart, of the precepts and principles of the God you call Father, you should sit in shame. This is the most biblical, illiterate generation I've ever seen in my life, and that's why it's so worldly and so lacking in power. Come on. We would rather accept entire homosexual churches than say, Thus saith the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now remember what it said? Corrupts your character. Put restrictions on yourself. I'm not running with that crowd no more. Amen. I'm not listening to that doctrine anymore. I'm not, Amen. listen, I'm not, you know Pastor TC, I'm, I don't fish for other people's fish. I, I'm not interested. This church is for people that are hungry for the mastery. I'm not putting down pastors that are raising sheep. That's good. That's great. That's fine. But raise them. When your sheep are still baby lambs after 20 years, you're a lousy shepherd. Amen. 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 It's not the sheep's fault. Any kid will sit in the corner and eat Cheerios till he's 30 if you let him. It's the parents' fault. You've got 10,000 teachers, but you don't have many fathers. Pastors, grow up and raise the church in the maturity. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. This church is to call people that hunger and thirst for for this, for the real Christian life to come. And in that, if you're going to hang around for me for more than three weeks, you're going to start putting restrictions on yourself. Well, I can tell you right now, pastor's not into you showing up in, in hot pants and Flip-flops. Amen. Not if you're going to master the things of the spirit realm. you got to grow way past that nonsense. I don't care if your stomach growls in service. Discipline your flesh to enter in. One of the greatest things that you need to grow up is develop spiritual doctrines in, in fellowship with disciplines of the flesh. You need to get back to some old-time Holy Ghost Fasting, putting the flesh down just to enter in deeper into the spirit. Hallelujah. 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 She's, she's on fire back there. Yes. You know, I have the Bible studies on uh, Wednesday. Yes, ma'am. We're in our like, little group and we're, we're reading Romans right now. And one of the ladies who spoke out, and the question is, she was like talking about fasting, which no one does anymore. And I looked, and I said, Yeah, I'm Yeah, like everything else that's biblically sound, uh, that's old school and we got to become relevant, which means you just completely coddle the flesh, let them do whatever they want, and grace will take care of it. You want to know something? Try that with your kids. Love corrects, love rebukes, love instructs, love causes maturity to come. You are the most unloving, selfish person. Did you, did you read in, 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 I read on YouTube, where they arrested a couple that's so demonically sick that the authorities found the baby in a baby swing in the kitchen decomposing. They let it sit there till it died and never touched it. Selah, that's the average church. It's sick and afflicted and unable to move or care for itself. And we got pastors that just stay in the swing. Don't offend them. Amen. Come on, brother. Glory to God. Glory to God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm ready. Are you ready? Amen. Are you, can you handle a couple more minutes? Or are you ready to kill the, the, the messenger? Come on, brother. Ready. All right, 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Now we're going to look at verse 39. Going into the next level of this 
understanding of repentance. Amen? Amen. Remember, the wrong people, the wrong environment, the wrong places corrupt your character. Please hear that. Everybody look at Pastor for just a minute. If you leave here with anything, you've got to understand this revelation right here. Sitting in the wrong... That's what I started to say. I don't want anybody else's lambs. I don't want anybody else's sheep. I'm not here to steal. I want to win the loss. That's my heart. That's God's heart. Stop swapping members. But if you're in a church that's not causing you to grow up in a desire to sell out to achieve the mastery, to do the works of Jesus in the last generation of the great harvest of the, of the loss, then you're in the wrong church. It's that simple. Corrupt communication Bad fellowship, wrong friends, corrupt your character. He's talking about the Christ character. He don't give a rip about your flesh. He's talking about that new creature with a new character that the born-again man possesses and is the real him. It's corrupt around the wrong environment, wrong people, wrong attitudes. Amen. It Amen. cannot grow. It will sit in the swing and rot. Amen. Hallelujah. I know I'm an acquired taste. All maturity requires you to develop a taste for it. So does sin. But your flesh is so used to it from the diaper up to sin, it's easier to teach yourself how to smoke than it is to pray. It's easier to teach yourself how to drink than it is to fast. But you still have to teach your flesh to do either one. Amen. Verse 39. Watch. This is powerful stuff, folks. All flesh is not the same. Get this, please. All flesh is not the same flesh. But there's one flesh of men. Another flesh of beasts. Another flesh of fish. Now, if you got a revelation of this, you stop sleeping with men, guys. You stop sleeping with women, ladies. Because you're not supposed to, there's differences in flesh, and in that flesh is different character for different glories. Watch this. Another flesh for fish, another flesh for birds. Now what's he doing? He's telling you in creation there's all kinds of different creatures with different flesh. They have different flesh, listen, because of the, their difference in character. A fish don't want to fly. It wants to swim. Birds don't want to swim. They want to fly. Why? It's their nature. That's what they were born with. That's what they were created for. And they're going to have the glory of whatever flesh they were given of God. And if you're around the wrong environment, you'll never walk in the glory of your creation and what you were made for. Come on. You lock a bird up and never let it fly, you corrupt its character. You corrupt its lifestyle mannerisms. It was made to do this. You take a fish out of water, what happens? Say, walk, fish. <coughs> it can't live that way. It was created for a whole different, please hear this, a whole different environment. You take the beast of the field, take your, your, your milk cow, put it on a boat, drive it out in the middle of the water and say, now you're a sea cow. Throw it out in the water, it's going to die. Why? Because that's not what that flesh was made for. Each flesh has what it was designed to do. And in that design, and in that character, there's a glory of it. You can stand with the birds and say, my God, it wouldn't it be nice to be able to fly like that. It's a glorious thing. You can stand and watch fish. I got goldfish in my backyard, I built a pond. And I watch those guys Boy, and they start playing, and they're whirling around there. Some of them even jump. I said, man, that's so cool to be able to swim like that. It's a glory. Amen. Then you can look at a horse and see it running across the hillside. Say, man, how neat. Look at that horse just take off and run. His flesh was designed to run, and there's glory in that. Amen. And then God made man, and there's things man could do that no creation could do. And with that ability... From that character, there's a glory of it. And none of it can steal the glory from the other and live. And Christians trying to live in the glory of the world are destined.
reason to die is not in their character. Amen. Now watch this. Verse 40. There are celestial bodies and there's bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. 42. Skip down to 42. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in what? Corruption. It is raised incorrupt. You know what? The flesh you're so worried about pampering right now will not go to heaven with you. Come on. Listen to me. The flesh you're, you're pampering right now is not going to go to heaven. Well, that's going to go to heaven. Your glorified body. It has to take on a whole different nature. Yeah. Remember she said that. Flesh with sin and all these things that sin loves to do in your flesh cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So if you're going to walk in the spirit, walk in, in, in mastery, walk like Christ, there has to become a death, a death to the old nature of your flesh. Hallelujah. Crucify it. And only in the death of your will and your flesh is the glory of the incorruptible able to come forth and live kingdom life. You'll never, well, it's just going to happen by grace. Not until all things that aren't of Christ you invest in with the decision of your will to put it to death and let it be buried that it might become new in Christ and the resurrected one in you becomes alive and a new glory is in your attitude and character. Hallelujah. Just about everything taught in church right now is opposite of you walking in kingdom and the glory of God in this earth. Hallelujah. You have to think about that for about a week. This is not baby stuff. This is mastery stuff. Well, I want I want to do things for God. And start the death process, darling, because everything's got to start changing. Amen. Can I have ten more minutes? Amen. Amen. Well, I wanted to beat the Baptist to the buffet, not in this church. <laughs> we teach fasting. And if your blessed assurance can't start standing in that line, God, do they ever shut up? You never say that at a race. Where are you going? I'm... Buying a ticket, go to fly to Florida, watch the Indianapolis 500. How long are you going to sit out there? Probably five, six hours in the middle of the sun, in the mid middle of the summer, sweating like a pig, having a good time. You can make your flesh do whatever you want to do. When your heart's not in it, your butt starts squirming. Is that simple? Aren't you glad you came to church? Hallelujah. I'd have rather stay home and got drunk. <laughs> Not really. They're good people. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> Most people come to this church once a time and say, that's not for me, Reverend. I know. I'm, I'm, I don't, I'm not mad at you. This church is not called to just have church. It's called to mature. And anything less than that, I'm not interested. Come on. Amen. You can't live whole in a corrupt, broken world until you grow up. I want you blessed. I don't want you corrupted with the world. I don't want you, the Jesus Christ born again man constantly frustrated, abused, oppressed, beat up, and broken by trying to live in a world in a level of immaturity that you'll never survive. Glory to God. So, verse 42. It's buried in, in, incorrupt, in, in corruption. In the resurrection, it takes on incorruption. Whatever you crucify at the cross and put it to death, God raises it up. And now that space that used to be in occupation in your habits and character is, vac is, is vacated because you put it to death. And now the Christ in you can come up and take occupancy of it. Amen. Now that. The Christ-like man is incorruptible. Amen. And not a devil in hell can touch him. 
But you got to invest in the death. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The only way to change the glory of a creature. The only way to change the glory of a creature is to put it to death. The only way you're going to get a bird not to want to fly is kill it. The only way you're going to get a fish not to want to swim is kill it. The only way you're going to live a life that wants to follow Christ is crucify this fleshly life. you got to kill it. The only way you can change the nature of a thing is to put it to death. Well, we're dead in Christ. Nevertheless, we live. Yet not I, but Christ in me. Christ in you. The hope of the real glory you were created to walk in. Christ in you. The hope of glory. Your real glory that you keep saying, I know the Bible's real, but I can't ever get my hands on any of it. Because it's still suffocated in here by the absolute dominance of a self-willed lifestyle. Amen. That corrupts it and keeps it pushed down. And Christ has said, let me out and we'll walk hand in hand and do great things together. And everything that's tormenting you now, I'll put under my feet. I've already conquered it. Hallelujah. I want to change. Get to kill it. <laughs> and it's not your husband or wife. Or your boss. It's you. God puts bad people in you to reveal bad things in you. God puts bad people around you to reveal the bad that you need to die to. And every time bad people keep telling dirty jokes and you keep stopping long enough to listen, guess who's just as bad? The corruption can only reveal corruption in you. To the pure, all things are pure. Glory to God. I know this isn't what you thought it was going to be. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man, say any. Mm -hmm. We're wrap it up now. If any man be in Christ. How many of you folks are born again in here? Amen. No, no, no. Hold it up there and act like it's starting to get on fire. Amen. That's me, Reverend. I, I'm born again. Amen. If any man, that means you're in Christ. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Oh, hallelujah. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. All things have become new. If you're born again, child of God, that means the old nature with all of its creature characteristics was put to death as far as God's concerned. No one that wants the problem. I got born again, but I still do the same old nasty things. You got to repent, mortify, to change, to glorify. Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah. As you say no to the flesh and it dies, Christ rises up. As you say no to the flesh, Christ rises up. And that new creature features and the new character and new nature starts coming out. But he won't take over. He only comes as you surrender. Amen. Amen. That's why in my heart I want to do what's right. In my flesh I never do what's right. In my heart I want to do what God says to do. In my emotions I never do what God says. Oh wretched man that I am. Who will deliver me from this bondage of death? Thank God through Christ Jesus I will be delivered. Amen. 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 Oh, yeah. So every time you say, yes, Lord, have your way, he'll say, stop that. You kill it. You take it to the cross. You consider it dead. And now the new nature, the creature that you really are, rises up and a different glory is seen in you and around you. You used to have the glory of a bad temper. Now you have the glory of love. You used to have the glory of lust. Now you have the glory of love. You used to have the glory of selfishness. Now you got the glory of selflessness. All different glory, and this flesh can't walk in that flesh. And this flesh can't survive in that flesh. 
Just think of the church, how many people saved trying to stay over there. No wonder their lives are screwed up. Amen. No wonder when they say, greater see this in you, means nothing to them. It doesn't work for them. Why? Because the fish are trying to fly. Hallelujah. You're a new creature with a new nature for a new kingdom, Jesus, glory. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now watch. Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. Pastor Tony, if you'd read it. Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. Hallelujah. Is this silence because you're in profound, deep meditation or because you're getting ready to kill the prophet? No. <laughs> I haven't decided yet. <laughs> That's all right. Just pray through, darling. You know that right now God can even be healing people of cancer as the word goes forth and touches them with the glory of God and a yes in your heart. And the glory of God will transform your flesh into the glory of health. Amen. Amen. I said that because somebody's fighting cancer right now. Amen. <sighs> Hallelujah. Are you ready? Colossians chapter 1, verse 13, Pastor Tony. The Father has delivered and drawn us to himself out of the control and the dominion of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. Amen. See, we've been taken in our born-again experience out of the kingdom of darkness into His Son. And in that Son, you have the glory of the Lord, the glory of all that is God and holy. But it can't show as long as you keep wanting to go and live and be entertained in the old kingdom. Well, if God wants to do it, he'll just do it. No. This Bible is replete with, come follow me. Take up your cross. Crucify yourself. Say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Repent, and you'll be cleansed. All the decision after salvation is up to you. Amen. Have the want to. Have the purpose in your heart. Have the desire in your heart. Have the fire in your heart. Be willing to invest in whatever it takes so that that kingdom that you're supposed to be living in is able to live in you. Amen? Amen. The more out here, and that, listen, I wrote this down. Let me read it. Earthly nature, your earthly nature and your earthly culture contaminates and then limits your kingdom culture and your Christ nature. You must, listen to this, you must not define your new creation nature by your earthly culture. Come on. Hallelujah. You understand the folly of we have to become relevant. Yes. They're telling you deny all your kingdom nature to act like their nature and exist in their culture and it kills the kingdom of God in you. You're trying to live among the terrorists that are destroying you. And we covered that last week. We have our own spiritual ISIS from the pit of hell that we're not even aware of. And because we're not aware of them, they can cut our heads off, cut the head off, destroy our lives, rip out everything that God's placed in us, and we don't even understand where it came from. And your spiritual ISIS is ignorance, sin, idolatry, and selfishness. You must not define your new crea creation nature by the earthly culture. Matthew 5, 14. Don't, don't, don't go there. I'm just going to read it to you real quick. Watch this. And God bless you for being so different than average church people that you stayed all this time. And God bless you folks. 
and you are being rewarded by it. Amen. Matthew 5, verse 14 and 15. Listen to this very closely. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hid. He's telling you right there, you're a completely different nature, completely different type of entity. You have nothing in common with where I've placed you. Be relevant to darkness. Jesus said that. You're the light. They're the darkness. Neither do men light a candle. Now watch this. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel. But on a candlestick, and it gives light unto all that are in the house. What's the point of your life in this earth? To shine in absolute cultural personality and nature opposite of all this around you. Now, folks, listen to me. He said, you are the light. You're the candle in darkness. How relevant does that sound? Somebody say it. Not at all. But the benefit is, if you shine, then they'll be able to come out of darkness. And you, you do realize that there's no such thing as such intense darkness, it puts out the light. Amen. It only gets intense to where the light doesn't want to shine anymore. Sila. That's the church now. We're not candles. We're electronic devices. We're self-created light. We don't have the glory of the Lord in the house, so we have smoke machines. We don't have the power of God anymore, so we do away with healing. We become this made man-made candle. You know they make lights that look like candles. They're shaped like candles. You know that? And some of them even flicker like candles. But they're not candles. It's artificial light. And what makes it even worse, instead of being artificial Christians that have no desire to flicker with the fire of God and to be like Jesus, we put dimmer switches on them. And a real candle, you're either snuffed out or you're lit, buddy. There's no in-between. Amen. You're either hot or you're cold. If you're a candle and you're lit, you're on. No, not now. We got dimmer switch. Oh, you're preaching too hard. Turn that down. And you can actually turn light down in our self-created Christianity. We got too many pastors that are dimmer switches for the kingdom of God. Come on, brother. Hallelujah. I never even shared this with Pastor Darlene, but she she went with me to preach to one of my spiritual sons. And I was preaching and he was interpreting. And I said something, and he stuttered. And then he started saying something, the Holy Ghost said, he's not interpreting. He's telling him something all different. And right in the middle of the message, I stopped. I said, did you tell him what I said? He said, no. I said, you didn't? He said, well, I had to change it so they, they could handle it. And all right. I finished the message. God said, never go back. And I've never been back. And I never will go back. I'm a candle, folks. I'm lit. Don't you dare put a dimmer switch on me. You learn something today? Hallelujah. You got a you're a creature with kingdom culture designed for a glory they're not even allowed to touch. That's what you live for. And nothing less. Get lit, folks. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Amen.